Tierra here with Gypsy Fate Creations. Welcome back. I am standing in the Old Bearing Point Cemetery in Salem, Massachusetts, and I thought it would be really neat to film a few of my intros while I'm on this road trip. I'm having a lot of fun and I can't wait to tell you guys all about it, so I'd figure I'd film and then ramble on in my video about how awesome Salem, Massachusetts is. Um, other than that, Stay tuned after the video when I do my cutting out, put in some videos and some footage and some pictures of things that I talk about. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned after the video for more interesting facts, I guess, and fun. Um, but speaking of soap, I am making a soap today and I am going to start off my collection of fall soaps today with a chrysanthemum. This whole collection is going to be like all my favorite things about fall, which is just fall in general. I am from uh, Maryland and we do get a awesome season when it comes to the autumn. We get the leaves, we get the pumpkins, we get everything. So everything in these soaps that you're going to see on the next few weeks are going to be all my favorite things about fall. So chrys chrysanthem chrysanthemums, or mums, it's easier to say, are uh, one of my favorite flowers and they're everywhere in the autumn. So today is an ode to mums, so let's get started. <laughs> soap so let me tell you a little bit about this particular soap that I'm doing here because it's a lot there are a lot of steps in this and maybe if I talk about it I'll not forget anything <laughs> I want to do layers on this soap they're going to be fall colored layers and they're going to have a gold mica line in the middle it's going to be two steps I'm going to start with my top here and set that aside so that it is ready to pipe when I need it. And then I'll work on the base of the soap and work in steps on that. Um, the fragrance I am using is called Autumn Day by Crafter's Choice. There's no vanilla in this, which I am super happy about using. Um, the soap is based on mums. Like I had mentioned, these are the inbeds. They're just some flower flower shapes that I've colored in gold and red colors. They're my two favorite colors of mums. Um, I've got my kaolin clay in here. I've got my buttermilk in here. And then back to the fragrance because I wanted to read to you guys what's in it. It says Autumn Day Fragrance Oil features golden pear, apple, bergamot blended together with crisp air, chrysanthemums, and warm sunshine to make a perfect autumn day. And it is a, a dupe of Bath and Body Works. So when I picked out this fragrance, I did want it to allude to mums some way, somehow, and that is perfect. So I'm going to give each one of these a mix here. Um, I'll add the color into this topping, and then I will add three different colors into the base, and we will see how it goes. Alright, so since I'm not doing anything special with this, I'm going to go ahead and add my color. I've picked out two different greens here. I have a green Vibrance by Nurture Soaps, and I'm going to add a little bit of that in there without losing that. Stay still. And I don't have the exact greens that I would love to have for this soap. I really want something darker but I'm hoping that if I mix these two together, I will get just a pretty green in general, that you will get the point. Great. And then I will probably set some of that to the side for some piping in there. I'm going to add just the laurel green mica, which is the other green that I'm using, into this little container so that it'll have a different shade, a little bit of a different shade of green to it when I go to pipe leaves on it. Alright, let's give that a mix. I'm going to add just a little bit of the fragrance in here. The most of it is going to go into the bottom layer. And let's give this a mix and start on... I 
I definitely have to scrape this guy down. There's so much sticking to the side of it. Alright, so the first day back from vacation, I did take an extra day off after the vacation before I returned to my full-time job. One, so that I can soak. Two, I need to get settled in. I need to unpack and do laundry and go grocery shopping and all that fun stuff. And I am so thankful to be home and not on a schedule, but I gotta say that was one of the coolest vacations that I've ever taken. I traveled with another friend couple, my husband and I, and we've never traveled with them and spent that much time with them, so you just never know, you know, if everyone's going to get along or be on the same page. And I think it went rather well. No one fought or got mad at each other, and we weren't tired of each other by the end of the trip, because it is a 11-hour ride from Baltimore to Bar Harbor, which is a lot of time to be spending in a car with other people. But we did rent a van, and we had lots of leg room, and the boys kept each other company, and the girls just, we just napped in the back seat, so it was wonderful. Our first stop was to Salem, Massachusetts, and we only spent about a day there, but um, visiting Salem now has me anxious to make all the fall scents and Halloween soaps, and I'm so ready for autumn to be here. It is my favorite time of the year. I love absolutely everything about it. All right, I'm going to set this aside because it is going to be the piping. And then I'm going to go on to mix up the lower base of the soap. Get in there. Let's mix that up. Just a little bit of green soap left on my stick blender, and I'm not too worried about it. All right, let's get this away. All right, that looks good. So I'm gonna pour off the first layer here into this bowl. of the colors that I wanted and yes I have this drawn out and written down somewhere but do I feel like finding it no I don't all right I think I'm going to start with some brown. brown on the bottom so we're going to do some luscious lus lustrous brown mica from Nurture on the bottom here pour in my soap batter into that if you've not ever been to Salem, I highly recommend it, even if it's just a stopover like we did. I'm sure it's really cool, but yet probably really crowded and expensive in the fall around Halloween time, but I'm sure it is a great place to visit then as well. It's not as quaint as I'd hoped it would be, but there was a lot of history and we spent just enough time in Salem to do everything that we wanted. Rearrange myself here. Hope that everything is in the shot. So it's not as quaint as I was hoping it would be. Um, a lot of the history there has been covered up by other buildings and they've renovated and made like condos out of a lot of the old jails and houses down there. So that's not as cool. But what is left we visited and thought was really neat. Let me get this mixed up and I'll start pouring. So the first place we visited was called the Witch House. It was the home of Jonathan Corwin and he was the Salem Witch Time. Um, so Salem, Salem Witch Judge of the Time. Hello, get together. Um, and it's one of the only houses that is still a structure standing from the direct ties from the 1962 witch trials. So that was pretty cool to explore. It was very small. They lived a very small back in the day, but to them that was a mansion. All right, so I pour in this first layer of the brown. And this 
scrape that out. And then I'm gonna do a mica line on this layer before I pour on the next layer. All right, what else? There's lots of shops, lots of shops that lined Essex Street and some were full of like really silly things like t-shirts and magnets and silly shirts that were just kind of touristy things. That wasn't what I was interested in. Um, I wanted to see like the witch shops. I am very much into that stuff. Um, I don't usually talk too much about it because you know, you don't want to offend anyone. But I am into the spells and all that fun stuff and crystals and such. Um, but there were lots that were filled with new age goodies. I like the crystals and the herbs. Let me get the mica here. So I'm using what's left. I might need to go down and get some more um, Maya Gold Mica Powder by Nurture. And I'm just going to put some of that into this little strainer that will come out. Oh boy, I made a lot of a pile of a mess there. try that again or not I think I need a better tool here All right. and there was even a wand shop there that looked like the inside of um, Ollivander's wand shop from Harry Potter that was really neat they really set it up like that so that when you walked in there you felt like you were in Diagon Alley I don't like that I have this big pile over here. I don't want to blow on it because that's going to make a huge mess. Anyway, I'm going to let that sit and then I will pour up the next layer. Alright, let's start on the next layer and just pour in another bit of batter. And I don't care if these are even or not, obviously, because I just want to use that same bowl. I don't care if the layers are level. I just want pretty layers. <laughs> and then in this one, I've got some wine red from Nurture. And I'll mix that up. else was there? My favorite shop down there was called the Coven Cottage. That was filled with what I would want my kitchen to look like. Just moss and hanging baskets and crystals and herbs and dried flowers just all over the place. Like that was my favorite shop and I had to visit that before I left. And I got a few souvenirs. I got a couple smudge sticks and some herbs and stuff and that was just like my dream right there. Of course, that's not what the real witches trials were back were back then. Um, that wasn't even about real witches. That was about hysteria. But it's still still fun to have that kind of stuff there. All right, add some more of my fragrance in. And mix that up. And we stayed at the Hawthorne Hotel, which is like the best place to stay at when you're visiting in Salem. And it's it's said to be haunted as well. It's got a lot of charm to it. And I would totally stay there again. So I suggest that if you go to Salem to stay in the Hawthorne Hotel. It is just really nice. Um, and then for dinner, we were always trying to find weird, different things, you know, we don't want just something typical fast food or chain restaurant, we wanted to try all the different places down there. And I am always on the lookout for a good Irish restaurant, like, nothing will ever beat Ireland for me. I always feel like I'm always trying to recreate it, my Ireland trips. And it's hard to find an Irish restaurant that lives up to that. <laughs> but the one I found 
this was it was called O'Neill's and they had Magners on tap and to me that means yes I will call you an Irish pub or an Irish restaurant because you have Magners and it's a cider that over in Ireland they call it um, Balmers here it's called Magners and if you have that on top you are my favorite place besides Ireland in the whole world <laughs> like only then can you be labeled an Irish, Irish restaurant in my eyes so the dinner there was pretty good and we just ate and drank and walked and was non-stop this whole entire trip it was crazy and by the end of it we were like we can't leave Salem without doing a ghost tour like that is a must and they're all over the place so trying to find the one that you really want the one that we did was called um, Salem Night Tours and I loved the host our tour guide she was very knowledgeable you know it was about ghosts it was also about like history and it was very educational and you just you just walked around town and she just talked to you and it was great I just get my mic line going on this one I don't even know if this tea strainer is even doing me any good at this point because I did such a horrible job on that last layer but it will be okay Yeah, the, be the best part of that whole entire Salem trip was the ghost tour. Gotta say, hands down, if you go to Salem, do a ghost tour. Even if it's not that one, just, just do a ghost tour. You, you learn so much. You visit all the different places that you should see when you're there. And then you learn about the hysteria, what the witch trials were all about. It wasn't about real witches, it was basically a bunch of kids acting weird. And they were Puritans, so, you know, their lives were just about religion. So if they did anything out of the ordinary, they just pointed fingers and said, you know, these people cast a spell on me, this is why I acted weird. And then they found it as a way to get land from people and money from people just by pointing a finger and saying they're a witch, hang them so that they can claim the property of the condemned. Alright, so that's a good layer. I think I'm gonna go find my other bag of gold mica. <laughs> and then for the last layer I've got the yellow which is going to be a little bit of sunshine yellow and a little bit of shimmer gold from Nurture Soap because I really want a golden yellow look. I'm just gonna pour in the rest of my fragrance and give that a mix. Great. And now for the final layer, pour that on. this all off. Alright. Pouring this layer on. making less of a mess than I usually do while using this mold. Could just be me, all in my head, but I'm kind of getting that vibe. I'm not making as much of a mess. Alright, so now that looks good. I'll scrape this out. I'm going to put the last bit of the mica drizzle on there, and then the, we're ready to pipe. miss this heat. <laughs> I don't even know how hot it is out today, but oh my goodness, I'm just, just sweating. 
no point in taking a shower if you live in Maryland. As soon as you get out, you just start sweating again. The humidity is insane. Take me back to Maine. <laughs> All right, good to go. Now I'm going to get the piping together. bit of mica on top. I'm really trying to get everything I can out of this bag. But I think it's done for. Alright, so got some good stuff here. Mica mess everywhere. We went to the old Bering Point Cemetery, which is where you saw my intro was filmed. And can't go in there at night because of the law, but it probably would have been really cool to see it like wander a cemetery at night. But we did stop by in the morning and just go through and look at some of the old headstones. Um, it is one of the oldest and best kept cemeteries in the U.S. Um, let's see, it dates back to 1637. And what else? Just trying to think of all the cool facts about it. There is a Mayflower Pilgrim that's buried in there, one of the first settlers in the um, 13 colonies, straight off the boat. He lived to be like he was 80 some years old and died and was buried in that cemetery, so that was pretty cool. Refill my icing bag here. There's a couple famous people there, like another Salem witch judge is buried there, and none of the victims that died from being hanged, being accused of a witch, are buried there um, for obvious reasons. No one cared that they were a witch, they weren't going to be buried there. Um, the last stop was... House of the Seven Gables, which inspired the author Nathaniel Hawthorne to write a book also called The House of the Seven Gables, which is what was inspired and the book was, you know, was written as if it took place in that house. There was a secret staircase in there that we got to go up. There were some pretty gardens, there was a lot of additions added on, we got to take a tour of. I almost bought the book, like I thought it would be really fitting to buy the House of the Seven Gables book there, but I didn't <laughs> because I'm like, it's kind of expensive, like you know they jack the prices up for these things. So I didn't. Plus, it's a different kind of writing. Like, I find it hard to comprehend to read that kind of text back in that day. It's hard to keep up with. 
maybe I'll find an audiobook on it. Let's keep going here. They just don't make houses like that anymore. Like the outside was wasn't the prettiest. It's like all black, but when you go on the inside, there's lots of wood flooring and the crown molding and the Gregorian styled fireplaces and the stair staircases and everything is just so gorgeous. They don't make houses that way anymore. That's like my dream house. I love the windows. I want that house to be my house. The chimneys, it's just gorgeous. finish up with my piping here and then I can put the in beds on finally so much piping I'm not used to all of this I think I've got my recipe right I think I have it down now to where I have enough You must have um, had to read, if you're from the US anyway, you've probably read The Scarlet Letter for School. That's also a book by Nathaniel Hawthorne. I need to clean out my cup. It's got old soap on the bottom of it. And there's even the house that Nathaniel Hawthorne was born on there. You can always go visit that. going with my icing here. There we have it. And then I'm going to add the embeds to it. Check on the rest of my piping here. It's going to harden up on me. lines. Well, my <laughs> soap lines because my mic is all over it. So hopefully I line these up. It'll be a miracle. I don't know if I need to find like the right angle to put these on from. And of course everything is slippery. Can I tell you guys? <clears throat> see. I'm really trying to concentrate. This is hard. It is one of the oldest surviving timber framed mansions in the continental US. That was really cool to be able to visit that. They've been doing so much with that house. They've just made it look so nice and they've preserved all the history in it. And it's just done a lot of good. Because like I said, a lot of the original history in the city has been covered up. And just isn't as cool. All right. Now I'm gonna go get the rest of the piping together and put some leaves on this. Now let's try some leaves then. See if I can remember how to do this. Nope. Kinda need to practice getting that. There we go. That little tip of the leaf going there. I 
If you're a fan of Hocus Pocus, there were a few checkpoints there to visit. Um, the school where Max goes to school at is there. It's not a school. It's like some public building. <laughs> then there's the... probably can't see anything on this side. There's the house that is now a museum, I guess it was like a town hall, I suppose, where the adults went to a Halloween party and Bette Midler sang, I'll put a spell on you, and they all came out the front doors in the morning after they danced their, their feet off. That looks awful. <laughs> That's like the really longest leave ever. Um, that was in there. What happens if I turn it this way? I like this way better. Yeah, I might go back over that and do the leaves this way. Yeah. I like that. I feel like this soap could be done on any holiday, any time of the year, you just change up some of the colors. Kind of like my Moon Series soap, that would be really cool just to do this, this kind of soap for every season. Alright. Now that I'm done with that, I'm just going to top it off with some glitter. What else would I top it off with? <laughs> Alright, just a little sparkle. And then this is going to sit for about 24 hours. And I will come back to cut it. How about a close up? cut up a few of these. Super excited about all the fall soaps that I have planned. If you guys don't know already, it is my favorite time of the year. Let's take a look at that. Oh, those micro lines are gorgeous. Love it. Mmm, it smells so good. I even got married in the fall. Um, the first, first weekend of fall to be exact. And mums were everywhere. Instead of getting a floral like arrangement or a florist to come in, I just went to Walmart and bought a whole bunch of pumpkins and mums and just spread them out everywhere. It was cheap, it was what I wanted, it went with my theme. I love mums. <laughs> of course, I love everything about fall, and I'm sure you guys will get tired of me saying that. <laughs> Let's see, I'm so I'm gonna cut up a couple more of these. Next video will be another fall scent, another fall theme, and I will be telling you guys all about the main trip. And you can stay tuned after this video because I'm going to put in lots of footage and photos of all the fun stuff that we did in Salem. So if you are ever interested in visiting, there are some cool things that you should check out. All right, and I haven't decided when I'm going to release all of the fall soaps that I'm making, but once I do, I will leave that in the description box so you guys can mark your calendars. All right. Super love the soap. Cool beans. All right, so typically I would be cutting this after work and dying all day to get home to cut it. And today's been an interesting sort of day. This is my first day back from vacation and to my full-time job and I was not dreading it, but it seems to be going quite easy. So far, so good. Um, started out a little rough. I, I walked into work today to one of the maintenance guys in there in the office saying that there was something wrong with the air condition. So I'm like, great. Nothing like 
summer weather, and no air conditioning on the sixth floor of a building. Brilliant. But that didn't seem to be the problem. The problem was when I looked down on my desk, everything was covered in water. And I'm like, um, so why is there water all over my desk? Does that have something to do with it? And he's like, oh, oh, hold on. And he had to go get a ladder. So I'm going, I'm cleaning it all up, you know, moving on. And I go to walk around my desk and a ceiling tile falls down and crashes in wet, clumpy pieces all around me and it just barely missed my head. And I'm like, did I bring back a Salem ghost with me that's like angry and does not want me to come back to work? Because I can totally leave. I have no problem with leaving. I don't want to be here. Why did I come back? But anyway, the rest of the day went on and then the power went out. <laughs> and we had to cancel the whole entire afternoon of patience, which luckily it happened during lunch and not like when we were in someone's mouth. But I got out like three and a half hours early. And I mean like, what an easy day. Come back for vacation and get to leave early? Psh, thanks. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. As usual, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Um, thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Stay tuned after the video. Yes, Smudgy, I hear you. Stay tuned after the video for fun Salem pictures and photos and all that stuff. And until next time, smell you later. All right, so this is one of the headstones in the cemetery, and it is a guy called, what is, what does that say? <laughs> I don't know what his name is, but it says he died because he was struck in, struck by lightning, and he died from it. And his tombstone is facing this, like, really big tree, and this is what the tour guide told us on our ghost tour, and it was very corny, but that's his tombstone. This is his tree. He was struck by lightning, and he was killed by it. And then on this side, you can see the damage done from a tree because it was struck by lightning. And she made some corny joke about how lightning doesn't strike the same place twice, but it does in Salem. I thought that was just neat. <laughs>